What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first ever live edition of Geek Scott Game. We are at Dave and Adams here for Halloween Comic Day. Very exciting. I'm your host, Josiah Leroy. With me to my right, my right hand man, Jeff Pavlock. What's up, man? And to my left, my boy, John Fick. Thanks for having me. So, very, very exciting. Uh, we've got a lot going on here, first of all, at Dave and Adams. Full lineup today. Uh, we've got two more live podcasts going on later, a bunch of Facebook live streams as well. But, uh, kids' activities all day. Come get pictures. We've got free comics that we're giving away right here, uh, thanks to our friends at David Adams. So, thanks for tuning in. But uh, shirts. Beautiful shirts. We've got some shirts here, uh, which we'll, we'll get to in just a second. Spoilers. But, spoilers. <laughs> Uh, first off, uh, let's talk about what we typically do. Uh, Geek Scott Game is our all video game podcast. Uh, it's going to happen uh, once a month here at the Geekiverse channel. Uh, we talk all about video games, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, not so much PC, but uh, a little of everything else. So uh, later in the show, we're going to get to the first details on the PlayStation 5. And then after that, uh, just some of the recent game delays uh, that have come about all in the last uh, really few weeks here. So, first off, we'd like to start every show. What's in your system? What are you playing? Uh, join us on Facebook Live. Uh, pump your comments right into the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to go to you first. What are you playing? I'm trying to get through Dragon Quest XI, the definitive edition for Switch, before Pokemon Sword and Shield come out, and it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just such a huge game. I mean, it's a huge game on its own um, when it first released on PlayStation 4. Um, but with the Switch edition now, they added so much content that I'm going to want to try out. Uh, this, it's just such a huge game. There's no way I'm going to be able to finish it entirely before Pokemon Sword and Shield come out, but I'm going to do my best to get through that. The, the story mode is huge. It's like 55 hours. It's a massive, massive RPG. It sounds like a JRPG. It, yeah, it's a JRPG in a yeah. nutshell. Um, I've also been playing some Castlevania lately, trying to get in the Halloween spirit. So I've got Area of Sorrow that I had downloaded on my Wii U actually oh, God. years ago that I just wanted to replay. So I'm going through that. Oh, always a good. I, I mean, I'm a Castlevania nut. I can play that any time of the year, but I always like to play at least one during October. Nice. So that was the one I went back to. One of my favorites. Soma Cruz is my boy. That's probably my favorite Castlevania character. What else? Um, I did try out Blasphemous finally. Really? I, I remember talking about that in a couple episodes ago. I downloaded it. Unfortunately. I'm not a fan. It, it's a really, I, I love the aesthetic. Uh, you know, art direction is amazing. The sprites look awesome. I love the premise and the concept, but it's just a little unrefined as far as the combat and gameplay goes. It, it tries to be like a Soulsborne game, like, like Demon Souls or Dark Souls just in 2D. And what happens is it's more, it feels more cheap than an organic challenge. So, like, there's times where um, like when you try and use a health item, you just stand like you could be hit while you're using a, a health item. Oh, okay. That's something that you find in the Monster Hunter games too. Um, if you try and like do a special move, your character has a really long animation where he's just kind of vulnerable. And I can I can deal with that in say Monster Hunter, the Soulsborne games because there's a 3D environment. You have more space to move, uh, move around in. When you try that in a 2D environment where the corridors are already pretty cramped, it just it, it's not even worth it sometimes to you know use a health item, use a special move. So it just kind of, it makes the combat feel a little cheap, makes the challenge feel a little inorganic. Gotcha. They need a little more polish, but I mean, looks great. I mean, if this if you took this concept and made like say a comic or a TV show, perfect. It's just not working so far as a game. That's okay. Unfortunately, some uh, some are hit, some are miss. Yeah, no doubt about it. John, what uh, what's in your system right now? Uh, what's in my system? It's a Blu-ray for Star Wars Attack of the Clones currently, but that's a different <laughs> podcast. Well, that's not um, a game at all. <laughs> not now, John. You I mean you asked me what's in the system. Uh, so I've been playing The Outer Worlds, mm -hmm. and I'm trying really hard to not say oh, The Outer Wilds. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, so that came to Xbox Game Pass yesterday. Um, I'm about four hours in, and I'm loving it, man. It is like everything I want from a Fallout game. And if you've seen the trailers for that game, you know it's, it's, it's from Obsidian. The, it, it's kind of like a spiritual successor to Fallout New Vegas, very Fallout-esque, uh, but less open world and less jank and a little prettier. And Interesting. It's, and it's in space. So I'm so, in. It, so it's better Fallout than Fallout 76 is what you're oh, saying. Oh, no doubt. I would say it's better Fallout than Fallout 4 in my opinion. Wow. How about I mean, that subscription, by the way? Dude. But not to get too off topic, I meant to bring this up on our list. Yeah, we can go there. So the <laughs> subscription for... I guess I'm a little bit confused. What it is. It's not just Fallout 76? Oh, that's... I thought you were talking about Game Pass, what I mentioned. Okay. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Uh, I, yeah, that is like... Th but that is bizarre. Fallout 76, and you get private servers, too. 
Okay. Um, other, I didn't look too far, too much into it because I'm just, I'm just so uninterested. I'm <laughs> like, it, it's gonna take a lot for Bethesda to get me back on the Fallout train, to be honest. I saw a hilarious tweet that was like, Bethesda in three days. You know, we listened to the fans, we listened to our feedback, we screwed up. Yep. And well, then, it's what, a hundred bucks a year or something like that? It's thirteen bucks a month, hundred dollars okay, a year. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah you can buy Dude, a yearly for hundred. Oh that's kind of steep, man. It's that's insane. Brutal. Xbox Game Pass is cheaper. I think Kotaku <laughs> Creation Trier tweeted out: <laughs> yeah. you can buy thirteen dollars <laughs> worth of Fallout seventy six, or you can buy Game Pass and get the Outer Worlds, the Outer Wilds, Gears of War five. Unbelievable. Like, a console's entire online infrastructure exactly. is cheaper than yeah. Yeah, it's it's wild. yeah. That's that's it's so it's so wrong. Like, I, Bethesda's had some weird misses lately. They have. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, but Outer Worlds has been great. I, I, I plan on kind of just trucking through that. I, I, I like that it's not as open as a Fallout game. Um, I like open world games, but I, I easily get overwhelmed. Like, The Witcher 3 was, like, the perfect example. I couldn't finish that game. Every time I finish a side quest. Oh, you like, can lose yourself in Witcher seven 3 more question marks real popped up. easily. So I, I kind of just I bounced on that one. Um, even, like, the original Fallout, or not the original Fallout, Fallout 4, the newest Fallout main game. I didn't finish that. I was a little overwhelmed. I, I, it lost me after, I don't know, like, 60 hours um the outer worlds is a lot more narrow there are open segments but it is it is pretty much a linear game it is very much like you're going here sure there's a few side quests but they're all in the same area you can't really there's like a there's almost like a hub world you have a spaceship that's a hub world system so you're not just walking from from place to place it being in space obviously i don't know it's cool i like it a lot polished it's everything that I've seen looks like it. It's just fun. It is. It is very cool. So, and I, I knew you were going to dive into that as soon as that was out. Yeah. Uh, just if, if nothing else, based on our, our article for most anticipated games. Yeah. Um, that was on there. However, I, that's coming out, or that just came out, so that's going to be downloaded on my Xbox. Um, I picked up Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yeah. I have not had a chance to dive into it yet. Did you play the beta at all? I did not. Okay. No. Okay. Um it's it's killing me because I, I want to be playing it, so I'm hoping I get a chance to do that later on tonight. Um, but uh, every from what I'm hearing, the campaign sounds really good. Ryan McCaffrey of IGN said it was the best one since the uh, first Black Ops. So yeah. he, he's I think he's played all the campaigns throughout the years. I, I play the campaigns. I, I enjoy that. I mean, Captain yeah. Price is a pretty cool dude. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, it, just that alone it makes the it cover worth it. is awesome of the, the game art like. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that. Is that the guy with the mustache? The handlebar <laughs> mustache? Is that him? Yeah, I was that looking, guy's got a stash yeah, of what like he's got. I was trying I like to figure that. out how I could make that happen for me, but I'm not there yet. Time machine. Uh, time machine, yes. So we uh, Also, we want to mention to our Facebook live streamers, we just published a, a poll because we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5 later on. Which are you more likely to buy at launch in 2020? Xbox Project Scarlet or PlayStation 5? Again, we'll circle back around to that. Um, so Call of Duty will be in my system very shortly. Uh, the odds and ends NHL 20 here and there, but really I haven't played a lot lately, and it's sad. However, this is like the string of releases for me right now, like four in five weeks with, with what we've got coming, uh, which, again, we'll get to a little bit later. Moving on to the next segment here, uh, we always talk about honor in the past. It's kind of just a, a thing. We, we talk about games that came out uh, 10 and 20 years prior. Just to kind of reminisce, see where we were, see if we've played them, and just look back at the hype or lack thereof on them. But uh, we'll go back to November of 1999, as we're about to be in November here ourselves. Uh, some notable releases, and I don't know if you guys looked at, at the list prior, Yep. but uh, the first Medal of Honor, PlayStation 1, November 11th. I did not play this, but I remember the hype around it was huge. Yeah, I played it at a couple of buddies' houses, so I never had the game, but a few different friends did. So I definitely, I've definitely played the game. I have some memories with it. I didn't own it. Nothing that is, uh, nothing that's near and dear to my heart. But I know what it did for the for the the genre. Uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, PlayStation One. I thought that was notable. Also, didn't play it. Played a ton of the Bond games, but did not play that one. Yeah, that one. It, it hard act to follow from a few years prior. Oh yeah. Uh, Tomb Raider: The Last Revelation on PS One. Donkey Kong 64, Pavlok. Yeah. I actually didn't get into that one too much back in the day. And I don't know. Um, 3D platforming was in an interesting place back then. You had Super Mario 64. Uh, you had the Banjo-Kazooie games. Um, N64 was really built by a lot of these hallmark um, 3D platformers. Then you had Banjo. Uh, sorry, not Banjo. Um, Crash over on PlayStation. You had yep. Spyro. Um, although I was always... I always thought it kind of odd. That's really the last time that Donkey Kong went to 3D. 
Hmm. Uh, even since then, all real uh, um, entries for him have been 2D or 2.5D. For whatever reason, Nintendo just never really um, went with Donkey Kong into the 3D sphere like they did Mario, because Mario then had Su uh, Super Mario Sunshine, you had the Mario Galaxy games, Mario Odyssey, Mario 3D World, but for whatever reason, Donkey Kong and most, I would say most fans you talk to would tell you that Donkey Kong 64 is a really good Donkey Kong game. It, it was really well received. Fans love it. I don't know why Nintendo had never, um, never pursued that any further. I liked it a lot. Uh, we also had Unreal Tournament. Uh, so Dreamcast. That one blows my mind. That That is that old now. It, it's kind of crazy to think of. I remember hearing my first headshot and, you know, double kill. <laughs> I... Um, fast forward, we're going to go to November 2009. So we see some really big franchises here, as well as kind of this. I feel like this was after the end of like the music game explosion. So we had Lego R Rock Band and Band Hero come out on the same day. That was a thing? Lego Rock Band existed? Lego Rock Band is actually very underrated in terms of rock yeah. band games. I All right, I'll take your word I've, for I've it. I've never uh, heard of it. Band Hero, I believe I had played a little bit. Uh, I, I played everything music back in the day. But Lego Rock Band had an incredible soundtrack. I'll have to post the link to it later. Wow, yeah. I was, I was all in on like Guitar Hero 2 and 3 and then like the first Rock Band. I was big into those music games, but I did not hear of well, Lego Rock Band. What was great about Lego Rock Band was it had a story, like a story mode, like you would play in the Lego games. Yeah. Uh, and the soundtrack or the song list was exportable to other Rock Band games. So if nothing else, if you got the game cheap, you could get it for 10 bucks theoretically and then export them into your Rock Band 2 or Rock Band 3 or now Rock Band 4. They carried over to this generation. That's awesome. So that's really cool. Uh, Dragon Age Origins. I don't remember. I I'm, Was this the Dragon Age that was not so well received? No. Uh, was that, two? that was two. It was two. Original was very. It was a huge hit. Okay. I never. I did not play that. That was PS3 360. Uh, on November 6, 2009, Star Wars The Force Unleashed Ultimate Sith Edition. So I want to say Force Unleashed came out the year before that. And this is kind of like the collector's edition. Sounds right. Um, it had some extras to it. I know it had some artwork with it. If you're a Star Wars fan like me, you, you probably ended up picking it up. I did. Um, speaking of Call of Duty, on November 10th, we had Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. That was a game changer for me. Yeah, man. it was. I, I probably have, I think I had like six days played in that game. It was it was something <laughs> silly like that. Um, that I, was me with Black Ops. That was one of the, the one, one of the more memorable midnight releases for me. I remember sitting outside of that GameStop, just like so hyped. I, I think we got there at like six p.m. right after school. We grabbed some food. We went over to that GameStop and we just hung out until midnight. Man, those were the days. Call of Duty used to be a moment. I'd still say that that snowmobile sequence is one of the best first-person oh shooter God. like oh action gosh, sequences yeah. of all time. Yeah. Like it's got to be one of the best of all time. Really good. It still holds up today. I um I didn't. That was just such a well designed sequence. It was hard to have a friend that was gaming and have them not play Modern Warfare <laughs> 2. Yep. It was such an event. Yeah, everybody had it. That was but. I feel like the one that really took Call of Duty to an even higher level than it had previously been at. And here we are, you know, ten years later, getting kind of the soft reboot with it, yep. uh, which is again exciting. I can't wait to go play it. Uh, on the 15th, we had new Super Mario Brothers Wii. Yeah. That's a Jeff question. It's, you know, it's that little game that sold like 50 million copies or something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that up. Did exactly they ship right it with a Wii? No. That, it, it <laughs> actually, that's, the, like, that, that's the amazing thing about it. It was never actually packaged with the Wii. It just sold an outrageous amount because basically whether you were uh, a longtime gamer or you were just buying the Wii for Wii Sports and Wii Fair or not, you were it was, or Mario Kart Wii was another one. You were buying new yeah, Super Mario Bros. It's the Brothers new Mario Wii. game. Pretty I think much. Don't 2D Mario games always do so much better than 3D? Isn't that Yeah, that's a real tradi thing, right? traditionally. Yeah, I mean, it's um, just... It, I think it just rings home to the classic Mario. I mean, parents are picking up a new console for their kids, and oh, the new Mario games are. Of course, we're gonna grab that. It's an easy target. It really is. Yeah. Let me. Uh, I'm sure on, it I was got, good too. I didn't play. I, my, my Wii didn't last more than six months in my house. Really? Yeah. Played my Wii Sports. Had fun with it. Played Mario Galaxy, and like it just started collecting dust. So I'm like, I'm gonna sell this. I want more Xbox games. Okay. <laughs> so I used some hyperbole before. It sold 30.26 million copies worldwide. So crazy. Which is Nothing still an outrageous at. number. Wow. Yeah. If I. Uh, 
if you're just joining us now on Facebook Live, thank you so much. We're at Dave and Adam's uh, Card World for Halloween Comic Day. Bring the kids down. We've got activities. Dress them up in their favorite cosplayer outfit. Uh, we're giving out comic books. Lloyd Taco Truck is in the parking lot. I can't wait to get some of that shortly, actually, in between yeah, shows. Yeah, I, I need a burrito. I need a burrito. I'm feeling a burrito. <laughs> Quick aside, hammer. if you're going to bring your kid and dress them up, bring the heat, because I saw a Steve Rogers costume. That was that was awesome. Yeah, there's bring definitely the some... Uh, some really nice cosplayers walking around here. Uh, we've got book signings. Uh, we've got comic book authors here. We'll be streaming all day. So get in the conversation with us or come see us uh, in person. Also, in November, I I don't think any of us have played this game, but I listed it because, again, it was the first in a mega franchise, Just Dance. Oh, wow. So this year's Just Dance, I believe, Pavlak and I realized is still coming to the original Wii. Yep. <laughs> Weird, right? <laughs> Insane. That, that will never not make me laugh. So that spawned one of the best-selling games ever, really, or franchises ever, I should say. Also the same day, Left 4 Dead 2, coming out on 360 and PC. I sunk a lot of time into this game. Did you? I played it. I, uh, definitely not a lot of time, but I played it. I liked it. I love yeah. the dichotomy of the games that released <laughs> that day. You see Just Dance, Left 4 Dead 2, and then the next one we're going to talk about, uh, The Duality of Man. Yeah. Just wildly different genres and you know, audiences that these what games a time were to be alive. to. Kind of amazing. And... You know, same day again, Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, so that, I think, took that franchise to a new level. But I think I that's still my favorite Assassin's Creed. So the only I Assassins think I really haven't played are 1 and 2. Wow. So I, I think you're missing out. I think Assassin's I Creed know, 2 is still the very best one. Two, but not 1. See, be because I didn't like 1, I didn't buy 2. Yeah. So I was, you know, I was still back when I was probably a teenager at that point, yeah. So I was still, like, tight on my, my gaming budget. So I got Assassin's Creed 1, and I'm like, man, I really don't love this. So when the second one rolled around, I wasn't. I wasn't amped about it. Um, I heard good things about it. Just never picked it up. Two definitely fulfilled the potential that one had. Cool. One felt like it, 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 it didn't quite reach its apex, whereas two was the one that was really achieving all of what that game design concept could. And That's how here I look we are at it. all these years later. Uh, series is still going very strong. Spawned a, an ill-received movie, but it, you know it is what it is. You can't win them all. Can't uh, win most of them if you're talking about movie uh, game movies. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> true. Uh, picks of the month. So November 2019. Let's fast forward all the way to now. Uh, there's some notable releases here. I'm not going to necessarily go through them all, but um, I'll start with John. If you could put your stamp on one game that you're picking up yourself, or one game you're excited for, that you're banking on. So Which one is it? Man, there's two, and I think if I take either of them, I'm going to steal the thunder from one of you guys. Well, so, I, may, I might take the other. So I'm gonna, one. So I'm going <laughs> to steal it from Jeff, and I'm going to go Pokemon Sword and Shield. Right. Oh, you um, can kind of split that. Yeah, we, for sure. We kind of have to. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Actually, um, no, we literally can, because if you take uh, Sword, exactly. I'll take Shield. So there we go. For there. Uh, Sword and Shield, I'm so hyped, man. I know there's a lot of, uh, I know there's a lot of, I don't know, Probably hyperbole on the internet. People not liking that the the full Pokedex isn't there. That doesn't bother me at all. I'm not one to complete the National Dex when I play that game. I just want the new. You know, I want the new region. I want the new Pokemon. Yeah, I want some of my old favorites mixed in, but I'm not crying that the whole new Pokedex isn't there. I um, am so far removed from some of the hate. There's a lot of it, the, man. Yeah, there is. There is. Um, but I'm so far removed from it. I, I'm not feeling any of it. I, I envy you. I, I, w I wish I was removed from that because it, it's. No, you know, I just mean that I'm not. I'm not at all. Oh, okay. Upset about the game. Got it. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking. I've seen it. Okay. I've been right in the middle of it, but I'm not. I have no ill will so towards excited. this game whatsoever. I'm super excited. There for There was them. people who were expecting like a Breath of the Wild version for Pokemon, like a complete reinvention of the game for the Switch. We knew we were never going to get that. This, when it comes down to it, this game still has a huge target towards kids. They're not going to put some kind of crazy RPG systems in this game and completely change the, the fabric of what a Pokemon game is. And that's why I like the games. They're, they're simple. They're fun. They're, there's more if you want there to be more. If you want to look into like IVs and EVs and stuff like that, you can do more with it. I'm excited. Pokemon. The can't go wrong. The one that bugs me the most is people saying that they're like pandering to the first generation of Pokemon. Like people are losing their minds oh. that they're, we're seeing so much of the first generation of Pokemon be prominent in this game. While for years, you know, a decade plus, all I've heard is, oh, the original generation is the best. Yeah. Why do they make all these new Pokemon? I don't like these new Pokemon. I have heard that exact statement over and over again all these years. And now we're apparently upset that Nintendo is focusing on the generation that is clearly the most popular. You can't, you can't please the internet, man. I guess, yeah. You can't please the internet. I'm pumped for this game. Galarian Ponyta looks awesome. Let's do Definitely it. Definitely yep. can't please the internet. <laughs> uh, it's very much like the Star Wars division, oh, yeah. in a way. Which is, Jeff? 
I'm just, look, I'm just saying. Topics. Look, yeah. I'm just saying. It's can, a little overblown. There's kids here. There's I a great know. post on the Geekiverse uh, Facebook page from last <laughs> night if you want to get into that conversation. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on. Uh, do you want to take another game? Oh, I, you were probably I mean, going to take Jumanji. Oh, uh, well, actually, no, but sure. Are you sure? No, I'm positive, actually. I mean, I'm going to go see that movie day one with you, but... Oh, absolutely. I can't wait for the next one. I mean, I'm not the getting the game. The You're right, it was. So, yeah, there's that. I mean, no, I'm definitely getting Pokemon day one. Uh, most likely Shield. Um, I'm still undecided on that exactly. I'm going to wait to see who some of the exclusive Pokemon are before I finalize that. Same. I what's, still what's don't know who my starter is going to be. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Is that we have to watch Pete try to figure out how to make a shirt because oh, I'm here right now. I was going to jump do, out quick, but are it's they more safety, fun to do this. Are they safety scissors? I'm very worried about this. <laughs> okay. They're actually like the crinkle cut ones like when you're making arts and crafts. And uh, thank, God. Cool. Cool. Yeah. thank God. Thank uh, God. Right, so it, it's not exactly straight, but... <laughs> We, di we digress. Right. So. Uh, no, Pokemon, day one for me. Um, I, like I said, I still don't know who my starter is going to be. Uh, I, I got to see who the final evolutions are before I, I, I make that pick. I know you're feeling Sobble over there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Going Sobble. He's just so sad. It's amazing. I love it. Did you guys see the uh, PC trailer for Red Dead Redemption 2? I did see it, yeah. Woo! Does nothing for me, but I'm, I'm glad that that audience gets that game, and it's going to be even prettier. Even yeah, I, I mean, I have it on Xbox One. I it is a beautiful trailer. Even My more gosh. gigantic than the original. <laughs> oh. That's you almost think that's like a system crasher. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so, I'm, do I go with the obvious? Of course, I go with the obvious. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order on November fifteenth, Xbox One, PS4, PC. I've got the whatever the seventy dollars collector's edition is. Um, it it comes with like behind the scenes two or three hours of that. I uh, believe there's a, a commentary on there as well. For me, being a Star Wars guy, that it's very exciting. And early impressions from what we've heard with big game media are very promising. For sure. I'm uh, so nice excited to hear. for this game. So what's surprising most to me is not that it incorporates mechanics. Like we said on past episodes of Geek Scott Game, whether it's... Um, eh, we might have lost the live stream. Anyway, it, it has you know wall running like you would have seen in Titanfall or maybe some of the lush environments you would see in like an Uncharted game but that the game is actually pretty deep and, to a point, not really linear. That's like, surprising to me. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of like comparisons to Metroidvania like, design styles where you have to kind of backtrack a location. Um, even like some platforming stuff I hear is really impressive. Yeah. yeah I'm excited. If you've, I've, so there's a lot of videos out right now on just what traversing the environment looks like and taking down enemies, and it, it, it reminds me kind of of the, the rebooted Tomb Raider trilogy. Ah. How, how she operates, whether it's a zip line or, or jumping over to, to different ledges. Man, I can't wait for this game. I, I really hope it's as good as people say. And Brian Altano, whose opinion matters a lot to me because he's a Star Wars nut like myself, um, said that he thinks he's going to be pushing this for game of the year. So wow. Star Wars fans, uh, hopefully it was worth the wait here through all these years without a, kind of that grade A quality game. Uh, also, Death Stranding. I'll be picking that up day one. I, I still feel like I don't know what it is. I, do, I don't think anybody knows I, what it is. I, when I get You're it, not I get alone. It. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for that big media review embargo to release so I can kind of see what this game's going to be all about. I need that, yeah. I think. I've got it pre ordered, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. But um, finally getting that, which is, is wonderful. Kojima san is a genius. Yes, he is. Sorry, Kojima san. Oh, notable mention to Luigi's Mansion that got the snub because we're talking about November when it comes out literally on the last day of October, Halloween. Luigi's oh, yeah. Mansion. Very excited for that, too. Ah, yes. And, John, you yeah, picked this up we, for can us. We, can yeah, we get man. that on camera? So we've got some lanyards here. EGLX, yeah, I was at EGLX last weekend. It was an awesome show. Nintendo was there. Uh, I got to play Luigi's Mansion. Game is just as fun and as goofy as it looks on the trailers. I can't wait. Dude, I, I am very excited for Luigi's Mansion 3. And I love this lanyard, so thank you very much. You got it, man. Ty, we're doing co-op for that. Oh, 100%. We are, yeah. what, we are cleaning up that Luigi hotel together. Luigi is so much fun. I'll like, bet. I was, I was a little skeptical. I'm like, that kind of looks like it's a bit of a you know, gimmicky uh, addition or mechanic, but it was a lot of fun. Eight. Yep. So uh, Bill Moffat writes in the chat, uh, Fallen Order is definitely the one worth waiting for. I will be putting all other games back on the shelf if Jedi turns out to be anything decent. Might be putting those games back, Bill. Yeah. Looking forward to it. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Uh, quick ad read here for us. Uh, so we've got a lot of merch. You can kind of see behind me if you're watching on the live stream. Uh, go to thegeekiverse.storeenvy.com. We've got over 20 shirts that you can purchase, um, including what we've got here from Mr. John Fick. 
Boy. John, do your boy. Boy. They're all it's so good. It's so, it blows it's my mind. It's my only impression, period. I'm going to record it, and then it's going to be the ringtone anytime you text me. <laughs> um, I've got our brand new shirt on. Uh, keep calm and geek on. Ah, that is the available. on is a power button. I didn't see that the first time you sent it to me. Yeah, that's I'm clever. I'm really excited about it. Sam did a wonderful job on that. Very that cool. is not available in the store yet, but it will be this week. Or you can come get one in person. We're doing a show special, uh, ten dollars or two for fifteen, right here at David Adams, right off of Transit Road in Clarence. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's the geekiverse.storyreview.com. Over twenty designs to choose from. We would greatly appreciate your support. All right, on to the big news here. The the big meaty portion of the episode. PlayStation 5 is official. No shock there. But we got some news on it. Just just a little bit of news. Um, first of all, uh, via the official PlayStation blog, we know that the system is coming holiday 2020. That's about as specific as it got. They talked more about the controller here than, than really anything else. Um, I'll read off just some of the, the quotes from the, the blog there. First, uh, we're adopting haptic feedback to replace the rumble technology found in controllers since the fifth generation of consoles. With haptics, you truly feel a broader range of feedback, so crashing into a wall in a race car feels much different than making a tackle on the football field. You can even get a sense for a variety of textures when running through fields of grass or plodding through mud. Yeah, so if you have an Apple Watch or a newer iPhone, you know the difference between vibration and haptics. Uh, Apple's been using a haptic engine in their iPhones for I think since the iPhone 7 and like it's definitely different you can program that to do a lot different like it almost feels like it's pushing back at you rather than it's just rumbling or vibrating it's it's I, I can see how this could be really cool in a controller for sure these uh, another quote the second innovation is something we call adaptive triggers which have been incorporated into the trigger buttons the L2 and R2 specifically developers can program the resistance of the triggers so that you feel the tech Tactical sensation of drawing a bow and arrow or accelerating an off-road vehicle through rocky terrain in combination with the haptics. This can produce a powerful experience that better simulates various actions. So they say drawing the bow and arrow, I immediately think of maybe like The Last of Us 2 Remastered. Yeah. We're getting way ahead of ourselves here. but Are we, though? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, some other features here for the what we've got on the PS5. Also, should be noted that they have not dubbed this the DualShock 5. Yeah, but we can expect, right? I, how could it not be, right? Um, so the system will have ray tracing, which is a technique that can enable complex lighting and sound effects in 3D environments. Uh, 100 gigabyte optical disks doubling as a 4K Blu-ray player. Finally. I they know. own Blu-ray. My PlayStation 4 Pro doesn't play 4K Blu-rays. It's Come mind on. Blowing. Come on, Sony. And it's Sony, right? So, uh, game installation required. Nothing shocking there. But what I really, really love about this, you can install specific parts such as multiplayer, for example, or just the campaign, for example. So we have a little bit of that now, but that's like based on the developer of the game. This sounds like it's going to be integrated in the system. So like you pop that disc and your PlayStation scans those files and tells you, hey, do you want this? Do you want to play this first? Go right ahead. Whereas like I know with uh, Call of Duty games, you can pick, do you want campaign or multiplayer to download first? So we already have a little bit of that good life, but it sounds like Sony's going to take control and integrate it system-wide. Sounds more refined here. For sure. More segmented, if you will. And that's going to be great for me because, you know, maybe I want to play Call of Duty's campaign first, or maybe I just want to jump into multiplayer. Either way. There's another thing that they talked about in this blog post that I don't think we have notated, but they want more customization from their dashboard. So you pull up like a Call of Duty game and you can click on launch multiplayer from the PlayStation dashboard. Or if you see some of your friends playing Call of Duty from the dashboard, you can click hop into Josiah's game. And you can do that from your PlayStation lobby rather than launching the game and then going into you know, that, the game settings and finding stuff to do. You can launch specific parts of the game after it's all installed from the lobby. They want your, your dashboard to be a little bit more uh, user friendly. They were talking about that as well too. Um, also, uh, Wired.com uh, got their hands on the control, a prototype, I guess, at this point. But they said it is extremely similar to the DualShock 4. There hasn't been a ton of deviation over the years until I feel like the the 3 to the 4. We almost had it with the Boomerang PS3 controller. <laughs> I remember seeing that controller in a Target catalog. That was a real thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I forgot about that. That was dude. a real thing. That was that almost launched. Oh, Thank God. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I'm happy where we're at. I think the PS4 controller is really nice. Do we think we're going to have the touchpad in the PS5 controller? When was the last time you used a touchpad for uh, touchpad oh, things? Yeah. Only when required in first-party games. You didn't like it, though. <laughs> uh, no, no. I don't, I don't mind it. I don't yeah, need it. Exactly. It's one of those. It takes up a lot of space. 
It yeah. takes up a lot of space. So I wonder if it'll be there. If it is, whatever. I'm just curious because I don't think we really saw it implemented much, even in first party stuff in the last couple of years. So. And if publishers or, or developers are not going to put the time into it, then what, what's the point? Yeah, right? it's, it's like the back touch pad in the Vita. Nobody, nobody ever used that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Takes me uh, back to Golden Abyss. Yeah, yeah. poor Vita. Poor Vita. Let's not get there. Um, so the controller has a speaker again. I didn't think this was going to happen, but like the... The PS4, it's got a little speaker built right into it. I like it. Every once in a while, it surprises me. I think, like I'll be playing like a first-party game, and I'll like unlock a chest, and I'll hear the click from the controller. And I'm like, oh, that was really cool. Yeah, I uh, like it. I, I don't mind it. Like I'll, I think it was probably Horizon Zero Dawn that used it oh, the yeah, most. Yeah, when you scan the room, that yeah. was cool. That was very. I cool. was the first few times. I was like, whoa, what's going on? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I like it. It's a little more immersive. Yeah, I don't mind I'm it at all. It's funny because uh, I like it. I was watching them talk on IGN the other day uh, on. Podcast Unlocked, they were actually talking about the PS5. And they were talking about how they hated the speaker on it. I was like, what does it matter? Like, yeah. you can turn it off. You can turn it off. And I feel like if you <laughs> yeah. have a headset on, anyways. Does it really destroy yeah. the experience for yeah, you? It doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't see why it's a negative at all. I, I don't think it... If, if it's something you can change, and it... I, I don't know. It's a, a little bit of an odd thing. USB-C type charging. So we know this is going to plug in directly. Uh, or uh, it'll have a built-in battery, just like the, the previous controller. Type-C allows for way, way faster charging. You get oh, way, goodness. way faster uh, data speeds and transfer speeds over USB Type-C. Thank goodness. For sure. Uh, PS5 dev kits are out. So they will be rolling out more and more. Right now, some of the um, t more top tier, or, or I guess more AAA developers have them currently, but they're going to be rolling out more and more in the coming weeks and months here. Have you seen the supposed leaks of the box? Uh, no, I have not. It looks bad. It looks really bad. So a couple months ago, after PlayStation announced that they're going to be doing a PlayStation 5, which we all knew about, there was a leaked patent design. And it looks like it's like this V. And it's like a horseshoe. And there's like tons of vents around it. And it looks really, really bad. And we're like, oh, that's just a patent design. It'll never hit the market. We've seen pictures of this thing, supposedly from developers' offices. It's horrendous. Oh, no. Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's no good. Um, I, I'm going to have to take a look at that. Uh, last thing here on PS5, uh, Blueprint Games who most recently did the Shadow of the Colossus Blue Point remake. Games. Oh, Blue Point, I'm sorry. They are, quote-unquote, working on a big one. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, I Not wonder sure what that means. I wonder if that means a big remaster or, like, a big game that they're you know, making their own from the ground up. I assume it means, like, a big one, like a big remaster. That's my assumption. What, else have, yeah. what else have they made? Oh, I'm not sure. Actually, like what off the, the top of my head, because yeah, they, they did that remaster for I'm Shadow of Colossus. Almost but. positive they did the Nathan Drake collection. Okay, Almost but have positive. they ever have they ever made a game from the ground up? Ever, I think yes. They've done like small stuff here and there. I could okay. be wrong about that, but I think I remember them doing some like smaller games. Um, but I'm pretty sure they did Nathan Drake collection, and they definitely did Shadow of the Colossus. I think you're right on Nathan Drake. Yeah, no, I'm, I'd be intrigued to see what we're looking at. So John's showing us a picture now. It's bad. What? What? It's bad. It's like this. That can't v. be. So. This is the exact design that we saw leaked in a patent a while, like a couple months ago. Oh, boy. And everyone's like, ah, it's probably just like a scrap. Right, but I'm this trying to look past the microphone, but yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't um, look I got good. It. So if you just Google it looks at like home, a projector, like a wall It does projector. look like a projector, exactly. It's different. If you just Google at home uh, PS5 leak, they're all over the place you know, on Google we'll Images. We'll put um, the picture on the live video, um, or not the live video, the, the YouTube version the of this, so you, you can see that. There. So, interesting. Very... Interesting. I it can't be. It's a dev. It it's, it's it's a dev box. If it's anything, it's just a dev box. It's it's beefier and it's ventier. <laughs> it's just so they can get what they want out of it. There's mm. no way something like that makes it to retail if it's even real. But it's interesting. It matches the it matches the the, the patent that's out there perfectly. What's up, Maddie? Maddie Rad and Maker joining the chat hey, here. Hey. So in uh, we've got a poll here that we're only going to run to the end of the episode. Which console are you more likely to buy at launch in 2020? Oh, I know Maddie's I an Xbox guy. Xbox Project Scarlet or uh, the PS5, let us know. Or sound off in the comments. So let's move on here. Game delays. Uh, we've gotten a lot of this lately. Pavlok, if you want to maybe pull up just the article you had, had given us um, in Slack. But uh, first off, we're getting The Last of Us Part 2 delayed. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. It's okay. I had four emails in my inbox telling me that all four of my copies of the game have been delayed. Yeah, that's I have, tough. I have every version pre-ordered right now. I don't what, know which one I want to keep. And I really so yeah, why do you have four copies again? I don't know which one I want to keep. <laughs> I'm like, kind of, it's like it's turmoil. I don't know what to do. I have them all. I'm a I'm a Last of Us fan, boy. I love that game so much. I might keep them all. Who knows? How many times have you played through it? I like not as many as you would think, based on how much I like the game. Probably five times, beginning to end. That's a lot. Two of those times are in one sitting. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I've only gone through the game once. Okay. Right at launch. You haven't played the remastered version no. yet. 
Take care but of that before I, it comes so out. So I ran into you a few weeks back. Yeah. I am. I, I, we briefly talked about this. I am going to pick it up. I, I have more time now, which is kind of good. But I still I think it's going to be my post-holiday game. Awesome. That'll um, be, I need to do that and just take my time with it and enjoy it. I it, felt a little bit rushed the first time because I wanted to get to the end. Get it done, yeah. And but we buried the lead a little bit. A little bit. It's coming uh, May 29th, so you're going to have plenty of time. It was originally, what, February? 20, 20? February 20s or something. Yeah, it was a Friday in February, one of the last Fridays in February. So, you know, just a few months, nothing too crazy. Um, it's a bit of a bummer, but we want the game to be right. Uh, the, last, the original Last of Us was delayed as well, um, and we heard some stories internally that that delay made that game from a good game to a great game. So, yeah, if that, if that's honestly, the case. delays are usually a good thing. Yeah. And I would say nine out of 10 cases that it, it's good. In this, it's uh, it's interesting because it's coming out closer to when the first one came out, which was June. Yeah. Right? It was for yeah, what it's yeah, worth. June, yep. Uh, but this also. Again. Um, another big delay that happened recently Doom Eternal. Uh, so this one. Doom Eternal. Stung. But at the same time, now I've got more time to pump into Star Wars here. So uh, Doom Eternal True. was going to be coming out uh, end of November. It's now coming out March 20th, which is great because Last of Us was originally February. I'm, so I'm thrilled for it. you got good spacing there. a little bit here. Yeah. Is it? Because there, there are a lot of people who are just like, are people just moving their games because of Cyberpunk? Because that game is going to eat the market. Is this, so, is this a Red Dead 2 situation where we saw a lot of games move that from that November 2018 window because, uh-oh, Red Dead's coming. Cyberpunk is April. Is it April? I believe. So, they, yeah, they want to get after this it. This is before April. Yeah. Oh, Doom is. Okay, so The so Last yeah, of Us March and, and then to so the, the Ubisoft stuff will be after, too. Doom in March. Cyberpunk in April. Uh, Last of Us in May. Yeah. As well as The Avengers, though, now. The Avengers is yes. in May? I believe it is. I mean, I'm happy for the Doom Eternal delay in a way because I don't think I would have gotten into it with Pokemon. Are you worried coming. that it may not hit on Switch for some time? Oh, well. Because it's not coming at the same time it is to Xbox and PS4 More now. than likely because March 20th is Animal Crossing on Switch. And oh, if, yeah. you, if you've got a Switch, you're more than likely buying that. There's actually a great... They're so th different in markets, though. There's a great meme out that has the two um, games alongside each other, and it says the duality of man, and it's Animal Crossing, just colorful, whimsical, <laughs> and happy, and then it's just the Doom background, hellish, and you know, fire and brimstone. I guess it makes sense. <laughs> but either way, uh, I'm actually a fan of these delays. Always. I, I, yeah, no, I wouldn't have gotten to Doom. Time, if don't it, release a broken game, right. folks. Uh I also don't want to see a game just get cannibalized by something else because something may be a little more, uh, you know, mainstream or popular. The other thing is these games that were mentioned in are such high-profile games. They've got to nail it. Yeah. We don't want anything less than their than their best. Uh, other games, Pavlok, if you want to mention Ubisoft, yeah, they have just a slew of delays here. Yeah. Apparently, these companies think they're Nintendo or something now, <laughs> delaying games left and right. Ubisoft is like pretty friendly with Nintendo. Yeah. Um, Watch Dogs Legion, Rainbow Six Quarantine, and Gods and Monsters. All delayed. Now, let's be real. Do we ever think Gods and Monsters was hitting? Like, we saw nothing about that game. Right. All we, we saw was a cinematic. Yeah, that's it. And, and I but, loved it. it but, they had it but they had it slated for February, all the way back in June for E3, yeah. and we hadn't even seen any gameplay yet. That was, yeah, I, I, so that one's not shocking. Never doubt in my mind delayed. that that game was getting delayed. Yeah, that, that one doesn't you know surprise me too, too much. What are the other two? Uh, it was Rainbow Six Quarantine and uh, Watch Dogs Legion. Okay. All right. Watch Dogs I am excited for. I liked Watch Dogs 2 a lot, so not a bummer for me. I don't really care about delays unless it's like a game like The Last of Us where I, don't I, I took a day off of work. It took two days off of work for that game, but <laughs> I had to cancel a couple of PTO requests with That's that. Right. <laughs> I don't know if Watch Dogs Legion is something I'm going to ever dive into. Okay. I want. There's always that game where I'm like, yeah, I want to do that. And I feel like that's it for me because I, it just seems almost intimidating to me. Like, too big. I okay. don't know. I don't know. I, I, I actually am in such a minority here in enjoying the first Watch Dogs more than the second. Yeah, that I've never heard that before. I just did. I got lost in it for some reason. And two, maybe it just it was a, a tough time coming out in the fall uh, in the year it did. But, it, you know, it is what it is. Uh, any other games we wanted to touch on? I think we got all the delays for now. For now. Delays, yeah. For now. All, there's all the gonna, there's more coming up. That'll happen. <laughs> there, was, uh, there was a lot. Always but, delays. Uh, we're going to kind of wrap thi or wind things down here. We've got a full slate uh, on our plate here at Dave and Adams today. Uh, we are with our friends at Dave and Adams for Halloween Comic Day. We are straight back. If you, you come visit, come get a shirt. We've got a show special, one for 10 or two for 15. 
Otherwise, you can go to the geekiverse.storyenvy.com and order from over 20 designs there. Uh, we're going to have also Lloyd Taco Truck is here in the parking lot right now uh, serving up some of the best burritos you're going to have in Western New York. Uh, so come get that. Bring the kids. We've got free comics for everybody. We've got uh, author signings at our table. In about an hour and 20 minutes, we're going to reveal our brand new show at the Geekiverse. Ooh, at 1 o'clock, right. we've got the Memory Machine Live uh, with Nate Lockhart. However, 2 o'clock, John and I are on a, a brand new Geekiverse show. Very excited to unveil that and get that going. Come back if, uh, if you're at home watching on Facebook Live. We can't wait to show you. So, boys, let's wrap things up here. Where can we find you on Twitter, social media, and what can you pump for uh, the Geekiverse right now? You can find me on Twitter at Jeffrey Povs, Instagram Jeff Pavlock. Um, I did all of our coverage for Joker, so that included some box office um, theories and predictions leading up to the movie, and then I did our official review for the movie as well once it came out. If you could go and check that out. If you haven't seen the movie yet, uh, definitely recommend it. It's one of the year's best. I loved it. I did. Yep. I knew I would more and more over time as it, it's kind of sit and stewed in my it, head. It hits you hard. It, it's, it's, it's a digester. If you're worried about seeing it, it's not. Um, there's very minimal in terms of graphic violence in this movie. Yes. So don't let that hold you back. Uh, it's, it's intense. It's psychological, but nothing, I think nothing you can't handle. It if is not the bloodbath that people made it out to be. If you've watched. Game of Thrones, it's nothing. Walking it's Dead. Gotham, even. Yeah, well, there you go. So, yeah, don't let that hold you back. Go see it, for sure, because the media kind of blew that one out of proportion. 100% agreed. Mr. John. Yeah, uh, I'm at Disruptoid everywhere. Twitch, Instagram, Twitter. Find me there. Um, I haven't been doing much in terms of writing lately. You and I have been doing a lot of ideas for, for some coming up podcasts. The one at 2 o'clock is going to be a lot of fun. And I've been streaming a lot, too, so always in the name of the Geekiverse. Looking forward to it. We're in the, the middle of the, the big gaming release season for the year. The biggest, I would say, here, uh, just as the holidays are almost upon us. So we'll have lots of game coverage. Also, our annual Geek Awards are going to be ramping up a little bit earlier than normal. Last thing we want to tease is, if you're into Star Wars, which a lot of us here at the Geekiverse are, we're going to be having a, a web series uh, dedicated to the lead-up to Rise of Skywalker. So I am very excited. Can't wait. Counting down already. We've all got our tickets for opening night. Uh, hope you do too but come visit us at david adams we'd love to shake your hand say hi to you and just talk geek for john for jeff i'm josiah uh we'll see you in just a little bit thanks for watching and listening <laughs>